A story that's been sort of circulating now for uh, well over a year has to do with the Atlantic Coast Pipeline and uh, a sudden rush of money that went to a special fund that had the governor's um, permission to use. Uh, That was until the legislature stepped in and said, oh, the Constitution does not accommodate that use of funds and does not give uh, the the governor the privilege to um, acquire a special fund. And so out of that came a variety of um, investigations, and it's can ongoing, and, and it seems to be heating up and uh, s- to such a degree that even the Raleigh News Observer is now covering it, something that they haven't done for quite some time. And uh, we have joining us this afternoon Don Carrington of the uh, Carolina Journal. As a matter of fact, he got sort of a uh, tangential uh, comment made to him about him and, and the Carolina Journal related to this story. So I thought I'd ask uh, Don to share some uh, insight on this story and how it began and where it is now. And with that, Don Carrington, again, associate editor of the Carolina Journal, joining us. Don, good afternoon. Uh, good to be with you, Lockwood. Uh, the, this story is now how old? Going on a year and a half, thereabouts? A year in uh, the, the fund, the, the pipeline approval and the uh, discretionary fund were announced the same day in on January okay. 26, 2018. So right. we're a year and a couple months. Okay. And now all of a sudden, uh, the uh, you know the media is taking a close look at this. It's been a long time coming. All right. Um, what's what is the complaint here? What's well, I shouldn't say complaint. What is the concern? Well, it, like you, you stated already, that the the legislature after actually after one of our stories, so we had a story about it the day it was announced, and it was my my opinion and backed up by other people that, that the governor did not have the any sort of legal authority to create such a fund to just go out there and negotiate a, an income stream that, that he would spend. And especially tying it to any sort of permitting process just seemed way out of line. And uh, other reporters knew something was wrong, but the General Assembly didn't wait but a few weeks, and they said if that money comes in, it's going to go somewhere else. And the other aspect of this, though, is other relationships. And there's a, a, a solar company that's involved in this as well? Yeah, there, there's th- there's three things that, that went on as, as this sort of took place. Uh, the the pipe Dominion Power and, and Duke Energy have uh, are together in this Atlantic Coast Pipeline project. They wanted a permit. They already had a federal permit to build this, and they had to get state permits to to proceed. They wanted a permit. The um, Cooper negotiated a mitigation discretionary fund above and beyond regular mitigation for the project mm-hmm. project, and that was fifty seven point eight million. But Duke also was in a dispute with solar developers on on details of a connection and how much would be paid, what projects could go through. That was supposedly settled in the summer, but it didn't get before this, but it didn't get settled very well. The solar developers were unhappy. So Cooper, unrelated to the pipeline, was negotiating, helping broker a negotiation between Duke Energy and solar developers. Now, so you have to three three things in the mix here that all got settled the same few, the last few days. Now the the aspect of this though is that uh, the solar industry had a, um, a there, there was a piece of property that was owned by um, either a friend or a family member of the governor's. Am I to understand that correctly? No. Yeah, that, now that's even a, another part of it. That's sort of like a wild card here for a, an investigative reporter, I guess. That after this was announced, uh, sometime last year, I, I believe it was in the spring, that that I did a story. I I found out that Cooper actually owned property that had a solar farm on it. Right. That no, nobody knew about. Nobody had reported it. Nobody in his county. They, he and his brother um, leased land to Strata Solar in 2013, and they put the property in the name. Uh, they called it Will Clark Properties. Now, Will Clark was the guy that used to graze cattle on that land, 
and it would be very hard to trace that property back to Cooper. Mm -hmm. But I was able to do that and saw that according to Cooper's economic interest statements, that he received income from Will Clark Properties for at least a couple of years, and then says he's not involved in that with that particular LLC, although his brother and he owned other property in another LLC name surrounding that property. This is a 40-acre site covered with solar panels. And the, the solar developer was Strata Solar. The principal in Strata Solar is Marcus Wilhelm. Marcus Wilhelm was also the lead guy in negotiating this uh, deal between Duke and uh, the solar developers. In fact, he went to Easley and, say, and said, please help us. Wow. Now, a lot of other reporters, I didn't call them business partners, but WBTV in um, Charlotte called them business partners, and, and others have said that they had a business relationship. Many of us wonder if if Cooper is actually really out of uh, an arrangement where he still receives income. So you, you had a man that was paying Cooper, asked for Cooper's help. Mm-hmm. I bet. <laughs> and that was delivered. <laughs> All right. So that just, uh, it's at least embarrassing to the governor. And I, I don't know what the truth is, really. Uh, the, you know, the News and Observer asked, uh, asked Cooper's uh, press people, does does Cooper or any of his family members still receive income from Strata Solar? Well, I think the answer is yes. The question is, is Roy in there or not? Uh, well, okay, and of course, that's Governor Roy Cooper we're talking about. All right, I'll tell you what, we're going to take a quick break with our guest, uh, Don Carrington, here for a few moments and then come back. want to chat with him about an upcoming story appearing soon in the uh, Carolina Journal. I know that he's continuing to research this. Uh, it is interesting. Uh, members of the uh, governor's staff have accused uh, the media now, outside of uh, the Carolina Journal, of being, if you will, uh, perpetrators or, or continuing the narrative that uh, was described here. Let me see if I can read this very quickly. Uh, noted he was, um, uh, well, I'll find, I'll find the, the phrase, the, the uh, sentence here, basically accusing them of um, uh, continuing a, a, a canard. Uh, that's the general argument that this is a false narrative. We're going to get back to this. Oh, here we are. This article props up Outlandish political attacks by the right wing John Locke Foundation and legislative uh, Republicans. So uh, we're going to find out more about this in just a moment with our guest, Don Carrington. Uh, right. And we see some outlandish. Uh, we'll find out if Don agrees with that. Stay with us here on Viewpoints on the Talk Station FM 107 AM 1240. We're talking about a story that uh, is, well, Proving to be a little discomforting for the governor. Stay with us here on Viewpoints. Viewpoints on the talk station FM 107 AM 1240. We're joined by Don Carrington. He is associate editor of the Carolina Journal. We're chatting with him about a story related to the governor. Um, an embarrassing, well, I shouldn't say an embarrassing, but a questionable story associated with a, well, uh, some have called it a slush fund. It was a special fund set up that the governor would have access to uh, that was developed for the governor. The legislature stepped in, took possession of it, almost $58 million, and uh, now more information is coming out. And we've got uh, Don Carrington, who's been covering this story from the very beginning. Okay, Don, you've got a story that's breaking here soon in the uh, Carolina Journal. What else is new at this point? And by the way, I, I have to make note of this. Uh, uh, the uh, governor's uh, consultant, Ken Udy, said that the governor was going to try to be more transparent. Um, it must be a challenging effort to be transparent. But anyhow, I thought it was interesting. He, the governor's going to try to be more transparent. What, what, what news is here? What, what about the transparency issue? Well, there's, uh, there were 20,000 pages of documents released on December 20th related to this project just from the governor's office. And then uh, almost as many reduced by the Department of Environmental Quality. So that's what reporters have been going through. That's why some of these stories are just coming out now, because this uh, getting a correct timeline is is a bit complex. Uh, one short little look at the timeline uh, that I'm working on right now is that on January 16th, 
there was an email from from a top uh, Duke Energy executive to uh, Cooper's chief of staff, Christy Jones, complaining about the the permit process dragging and saying the uh, essentially blaming it on UD. Huh. All the right. next day, the next day, there was a scheduled call took place between uh, Cooper and Duke CEO Lynn Good. It was essentially described as an hour-long phone call, or up to an hour. Took place at four o'clock. Um, the next day, shortly after noon, UD releases a a sixteen point eight day messaging plan development activity involving 10 different people on what their messages were going to be to different groups as they rolled out this pipeline permit, the uh, discretionary fund, and the settlement between Duke and solar developers. Mixed them all together with UD at the command. And that email itself shows that all these things were related. Uh, the wow. messaging, including checking in with the Democrat Party in advance. Um, really? Oh, oh, oh so, yeah, so it, we... it just said so. You're right. The Democrat Party was involved in messaging development <laughs> prior to the pipeline folks being told they were going to get their permit. Oh, my gosh. Uh, and, and we... we, <laughs> we... It all happened. <laughs> we have, and this is documented. This, this is the thing that's fascinating. All right, um, Don, looking at this story, of course, Don, uh, pardon me, Don Carrington with us from the uh, Carolina Journal. Looking at this story, do we have more to come, do you think? Or is it a matter of, okay, uh, the, the governor's just going to have to prove that, one, he's no longer associated with uh, Strata Solar or, or the property on which it sits, and two, that uh, there was no um, um, quid pro quo. Or is there more to come, do you think? Um, well, I think there's more to come because you have a, a legislative committee hired three private investigators wow. to, to view documents and interview employees. But Cooper will not let state employees be interviewed on this matter. Uh, he refuses to let the investigators talk to state employees. Has now, he, has, is he probably... Ex- as he He's said, to why to Duke employees? Um, so I, I don't know what they're what sort of report they're going to come up with when they're going to release it. But these are two IRS uh, investigators, uh, former IRS investigators, and one former FBI, each with 29 years experience. So you have reporters like me that are looking at. You have people that are really trained investigators are trying to put pieces together. And uh, I'm not sure when it's going to end, but um, the governor's has, office has never offered uh, hmm. a position that says they had the legal authority to do it, nor did they threaten to sue when the General Assembly said, if this money comes in, it's not going to what you agreed to, it's going to what we'd send it to. And that would be the school systems in the eight counties that uh, hmm. traversed by the, uh, the pipeline. I don't know that the money will ever come in. But um, the General Assembly felt the governor certainly could not do what he did. And and the other aspect of this, before we wrap it up with you, Don, Don Carrington of the Carolina Journal with us, is the fact that you've got environmentalists that are upset over the fact that this pipeline is being uh, considered. It hasn't Construction hasn't started yet, but that it was permitted. So um, there are some dis- discrepancies, or pardon me, disgruntled people there as well, is there not? Oh, yeah, they're... They- there's still a lot of people that are just upset over the pipeline, and they were upset over Cooper's Cooper's deal to let the pipeline go through, get some money in exchange that he would probably spend on economic development or mitigation above what, what was required or wow. unspecified un, uh, renewable energy projects in those counties affected by the pipeline. You know, we're they put more solar farmers like his somewhere around the pipeline. And it's, it's amazing that some of the energy experts will tell you the reason we need natural gas is because of all the solar we have. <laughs> solar is very unpredictable, so you got to build natural gas to keep up with it. Uh, so 
it's it's a big mess. Our guest this afternoon, I thank you for being with us, Don Carrington of the Carolina Journal. Go By the way, go to the website, carolinajournal.com. You can search out this story and a variety of other stories as well. Don, as always, a pleasure to have you on. It's been a couple of, well, actually over a year. So uh, it's great to hear your voice again. Uh, good to be with you, Lockwood. Call me anytime. Outstanding. Uh, we do. Uh, as a matter of fact, Don, I just want to make mention of this. We first started talking about this years ago related to a la- another land deal associated then with Governor Mike Easley. Uh, stay with me. I'll chat with you briefly off air just to recall some of those uh, comments as well. Don Carrington of the Carolina Journal with us here this afternoon on Viewpoint. Stay with us. More just around the corner. <laughs> 